our work uh, with my co-authors uh, Leonid and Pablo, it's about parameterized regular expressions. Uh, so, well, yeah, parameterized regular expressions are just uh, regular expressions with variables. So, uh, what are we going to understand by, by variables? Well, we're working with a, a finite alphabet, which we call, as usual, sigma. Uh, I believe we are going to assume through all the talk that it will be just the symbol 0 and 1. And we're also going to consider a set of uh, variables. Okay, so we have as many variables as we want. Um, so now we consider expressions over this, this combined alphabet using uh, sigma and, and v variables. So there you have some uh, two examples. So these two are parameterized regular expressions over the alphabet 0, 1. Now, um, so you, we have these variables, so now we want to say, okay, so what is the language? So obviously these, these expressions, they define the, a language over this combined alphabet, but this is not interesting. The interesting thing is to make them define languages over sigma. So for this, uh, what we need to define first, we need the concept of uh, valuation. So the idea here is that these variables may represent um, different interpretations that we're going to give them uh, to symbols of the alphabet. So, so just for now, uh, we will see some extensions later. We're going to assume that variables are interpreted as symbols from sigma, okay? So um, just an example again, so we have this expression, so 0x star 1, xy star. Uh, we could have this uh, valuation sending x to the symbol 0, y to the symbol 1. Uh, so the valuation of this expression, we arrive at, at this, okay? So 0, 0 star 1, 0, 1 star. Now using these valuations, there are two options, two choices for semantics. So they, they arise uh, quite naturally. So the first thing you could do, you could just uh, take the union of all these um, expression resulting of applying all possible valuations. So this we call the, the diamond or the possibility semantics. Again, just let me give you an example. So you have this expression, the same as before. Uh, so now the uh, possibility language of this expression would be, well, the language of this expression, which um, is basically when we send both variables to zero, uh, together with the language of that expression, we're sending, I believe, yeah, uh, x to 0, y to 1, uh, together with the language of this expression and the language of, of when we send both to 0, okay? So this is the definition of the possibility uh, semantics. Uh, and, well, the other option, you could probably guess it. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah, so you could check, for instance, uh, given that this word is in the second uh, expression, in the language of the second expression, then we just say that it belongs to the possibility semantics. And yeah, and you can guess the other option is obviously taking the intersection. So we would call this certainty semantics or, or box. Um, so again, you have an example. So uh, just a slightly different expression. So anything that you would want, x, y, and then anything. So the idea here, um, this would represent the language of the intersection of uh, all these four expressions, so they all result of different valuations that we give to x and y. Um, so now notice, it's quite interesting, uh, any word belonging to the language, to the certainty language of this expression, will need to contain these bits, okay, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. Uh, say, for instance, this word, okay? So you can clearly check that it contains it, it, these bits. But the thing is, um, given that the, the, you're basically doing this, this uh, the bridging sequence of length um, of two symbols, sorry, then all, uh, no word uh, with length less than, less than four will belong to the certainty semantics of this expression. So we will use this later to show how we um, manage to get some, some concise representation of regular languages. But, um, but just, yeah, let me, let me uh, continue with this definition. So this is uh, also fairly obvious. There are uh, a finite number of possible valuations from the variables we're using to the alphabet. So we have regular languages for both semantics. Now, um, let, me, let me just show you some applications. Uh, I'm going to begin um, with graph databases. So this is how we encounter these objects. And this is an application where we're going to use the certainty semantics. Now, uh, graph database, um, they're being studied in, in database literature. Um, as a way of, uh, of, 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 of 
modeling what these applications do, for instance, RDF or, or a semantic, um, or social networks, sorry, or semantic webs, scientific data. So, so you basically take the model, which is an edge label graph. Or, or if you want an NFA without initial and final states, something like this. Uh, and now you go one step beyond and say, OK, uh, in these graph databases, there could be missing information. So this has been noted before. Just to show you an example, now suppose that you have some scientific data. So you have some proteins, uh, P1, Q1, P2, Q2. And, um, uh, and you say, OK, we know that these proteins are interrelated between them. Uh, we know that it's the same relation, but we don't know what relation is. So what we do, we just put an X here in both of them. So, so this is a variable. It's a sort of placeholder, but just saying, OK, they are related by the same thing. We just don't know what it is. So this is uh, how, you, you, um, how you naturally model when you miss information in a graph database. So, so it's just a, a, an edge label graph, but now your labels can be also variables. Again, this is an NFA uh, over this combined alphabet. Or as we will see next, you can start using parameterized regular expressions. Um, so, so for querying these graphs, we're now interested in certain answers. This is what you usually do with incomplete uh, information in databases. So basically, the answers that hold overall possible interpretations that we give to the variables. Um, so, so let me just show you how we're going to use these parameterized regular expressions. So we have an example of a graph. Uh, let's just say that we're interested in the, all the paths from, um, from N, I hope you can see this, from N3 to N5. Um, so we're going to be concentrated on this edge, basically. And you can check that the uh, regular expression defining the labels of all paths from N3 to N5 corresponds to this object over here, OK? So this is B, B star representing the loop, YA. Again, B star X or B star X, Y. So this is the regular expression. And the interesting thing is, if, if we want to uh, be certain that there, is a, um, that there is a word that is always labeling a bus here, no matter what is the interpretation that we give to these variables, then we know that this word um, will be labeling this bus if, if and only if it belongs to the certainty semantics or the box of this expression, OK? We, there will, I mean, this, this word will be labeled in this path if and only if it belongs to this expression. Again, overall possible interpretations of the variables. Um, so, so if you want to start computing certain answers and, and caring about paths in incomplete graph databases, then you need to be working with parameterized regular expressions. So this is an example of the uh, certainty semantics. Now let me get to the possibility case. Uh, so this is program analysis. So what you do in, in program analysis, normally, um, you get a, an alphabet of, of some operations that you can do. And, and you also have some variables that now you treat them as placeholders for different data that you might encounter. So pointers, files, uh, whatever you want that will be changing. Um, and now you will want to use something like this to specify some undesired behavior. So, so this is just basically meaning anything in my language which is not defined x and then use x. So this is use x before it's been defined. So I don't like this. So this is uh, unspecified behavior. Uh, and the idea now is to, to create a graph uh, that will serve as an abstraction of this program and evaluate this, um, this expression over this, this graph. Now, obviously, uh, if there is some interpretation of the variable x such that this uh, is true on my graph, then it will mean that there is, I, I've seen a path which has this undesired behavior. So in this case, I, I, I will sort of reject and say that my program analysis uh, returns in failure. So then again, notice that we're using the possibility semantics. We now want one interpretation of the variable x uh, to belong to, to, to the language of the expression. So, so, so this is an example of the possibility semantics. Now, um, now what do we do in this paper? Well, I mean, we're just starting to study this. So, so we, we we study some, some, some theoretical problems, so some decision problems, just the usual thing that you want to do with formal languages, uh, emptiness, universality, containment, and membership. And we're also interested in, in seeing how concise uh, are, are these, these representations. So, so uh, how, what would be the cost of representing this uh, into uh, an NFA, for instance? Um, 
yeah, so this is what I will be uh, talking for the remainder of the talk. Um, so I'm going to begin with some, some the, the easiest uh, or maybe brute force upper bound technique. Um, we're evaluating, uh, we're sending variables to symbols of the alpha, right? Now, clearly the possible, uh, th there can be exponentially many evaluations, okay? So uh, my possibility is to the power of the number of variables that I have. Now, if we, if we take the union of all these expressions and, and just do like the standard union construction, then we will have an exponential NFA for the possibility semantics. This is just using brute force. And if we take the, the, the now the, the, the intersection, we take the product of all these, um, this automaton, we will have a double exponential NFA. I will show you later that these are tight bounds, but, but this is just to say that the interest is not really on the upper bounds, but we, we're interested in seeing, okay, is it, is it true that these are, are actually um, that difficult or, or that um, representative? So this is what we, we show first in the decision problems. So, um, so given that we, we, we found along in our, in, in, in our study that the problems with, with the complexity was kind of high, we tried to lower this complexity. So we I sort of defined two fragments of this expression that might uh, result in lower complexity. So the first thing uh, would be to forbid repetitions of variables, so something like this. So only use x once, and this is just a syntactic condition. And the other thing would be, well, just to, to take away clean star at all, okay? So, so finite languages. Um, so, so let, let me begin with non-emptiness. So non-emptiness for the possibility, it, it's quite easy. It's basically the same. Uh, so clearly, the, 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 the possibility uh, semantics language for this expression uh, is always uh, non-empty, right? It's a regular expression. Now, um, for, the, for the box semantics, the certainty semantics, the case is absolutely different. So we can actually prove a, an XP space completeness. So the upper bound, again, is by using this brute force construction and checking on the fly. And we also prove the, the lower bound in the paper. Uh, perhaps perhaps what, what's even more interesting, we can, we can actually show that even if you don't repeat variables, still, it is still XP space hard. Uh, and even if you, if you forced no, no clean start, then it is still difficult to check for, uh, for non-emptiness. Um, so, yeah. I'm, let me just focus here on this, on this theorem. We, we get a, a number of interesting things out of it. So this is one of my favorite. Um, it shows you that, that the behavior, it's kind of strange. So, so what this is saying, uh, this is the tool that we're using for hardness. This is just saying that if, if you have a, a, a set of parameterized expressions, n parameterized expressions, then you can con construct one which is um, empty if and only if the intersection of all of them is empty, okay? Um, and more interesting, you can construct it in polynomial time, okay? Now, assume now that these are, are, are just regular expressions, no, not, not parameterized. But this is, uh, and try to do this with regular expressions, you will obviously uh, cannot, right? So, so, so you cannot really construct this in polynomial time for the case of regular expression. You can for, for the case of parameterized regular expressions. So, so this we use for the, for the lower bound. Um, and, and we, yeah, from this tool, we immediately get this space hardness by thinking on the regular expressions case. Uh, and this is also quite interesting since we're basically reducing from the Turing machine uh, execution, we, we, at the end, we, we can actually show that you can construct uh, very complicated expressions, but you can construct nonetheless uh, expressions in which um, the language, the certainty language, uh, does not accept any word uh, which has not double exponential size. Okay, so you have a very tiny thing which is accepting very incredibly big words and nothing else. So just, I will just show you the exponential bound because double exponential bound, I, I will, it's much more complicated. Um, so consider an expression of this form, okay? So fix a number n and, and you will have basically anything that you want. This is our alpha at zero one and as usual, then uh, the concatenation of n variables and then anything that you want again. So this is just similar to the example that I show you. Uh, Given that I'm, I'm considering the intersection of all of these for all possible valuations, notice that by doing all valuations, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to create all possible n-bit strings, okay? And now I'm going to take the intersection of all these 
whatever that whatever I want, then an n bit string, then whatever I want. So if a word belongs to the certainty semantics of this language, then it must contain each of these n bit strings. Right? So then again, yeah, so this is a, a, the bridging sequence of order n, and this is of size exponential. So this is the exponential size. Uh, you can see in the paper the, the, the double, in the full version at least, the double exponential. Um, so for universality, it's a, it completely the opposite. Now it's going to be easy for the case of box semantics, but it's going to be difficult for the possibility semantics. Uh, this is basically because now, now, now what you need to show, you need to... Um, you need to show that that, that that all your evaluations create this, this universal language. So you need to really check all possible evaluations for the case of possibility, but not for the case of certainty. So for the case of certainty, this only be space complete. Um, so yeah, so we also prove this containment for both semantics. So in this case, circle could be diamond or box. Uh, but but it, it is immediate from, from the other problems that, that we have. Um, Sorry, yeah, so given that since uh, a language is empty, if and only if it is, it is subset of the empty language, and a language is uh, universal, if and only if the universal language is a subset of this language, then we immediately get that containment for both semantics is XP space complete. Um, and then again, even if restricted to simple expressions. So this is quite, uh, quite interesting as well. And for membership, so this is, more or less application driven, the study of, of now I have a word. Um, so my input is a word and an expression. And I want to know if this word belongs to the language of the expression. Uh, so yeah, easily by guessing evaluation, uh, for the possibility case, I will go into guess evaluation that witness the membership of the word. For the certainty case, I will uh, guess evaluation that does not witness the membership of the word. And then all that you need to do is to prove that this bounds are tight. So we do that in the paper as well. So membership is NP complete and co -MP complete uh, respectively. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to be stop that much on this, but um, we can do a much simpler analysis, uh, sorry, a much finer analysis. And this will show you that the membership problem is hard unless you take simple and start height zero expressions, okay? So this is basically a, a very, very, very simple case of a parameterized expression. So you don't repeat variables and you don't have clean start. But, but again, even if you, if you don't have clean star, then the problem is still uh, intractable. So, so this is quite bad news, bad news uh, or, or if you want to think about bad news. Um, so yeah, so we do more things. I'm not going to show it to you. I will run out of time. Um, we examine what happens with, with containment with, when we're fixing one expression. Uh, same with the word. So what is if the word now is fixed? Is containment still hard? Uh, and also, we, we try to intersect these things with regular language and now check for, um, for emptiness. So the, the, the interesting thing, so these, these problems are quite motivated by the applications. This is why we study. Um, yeah, so, um, so computational problems. So this is perhaps a, a, a bit more interesting to see. Um, so yeah, so we want an NFA. Um, that, that capture this language, the possibility language or the certainty language. Now, we, we already saw that by using just brute force, we get this exponential, double exponential bound, and we, we prove that these bounds are tight. So you cannot, you, you cannot really, uh, so there, are, there, there is a family of expressions um, such that the, the certainty, uh, the, the, an NFA for the certainty language would be double exponential for all of them, and an NFA for the possibility language would be exponential for all of them. Um, so the proof, yeah, so we, we're going to be using the same tool constructing uh, a pooling set. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't, I will just uh, browse through it. But, but yeah, so the idea is that you, you need to build the, this, this pooling set and you can easily, uh, you can easily construct it. So the proof of this is in the paper, you can see it. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, so this is the study of, of parameterized regular expressions. Uh, so in the paper, we finish with a, with a note about extending semantics. So now you could think, um, OK, what if, I, if I, I, I'm replacing variables by, say, words? Or maybe what if I'm replacing variables by complete languages? Um, 
So uh, for the case of possibility semantics, this has been studied before uh, for infinite alphabets, uh, but it's not very interesting, or at least for us, uh, you can easily get non-regular languages. So if you have something like this, and now you're saying that you're going to be mapping X to any possible word in, in sigma star, then this represents uh, the language of squared words. So, so no regular, uh, and we don't study it because we don't like non-regular. Uh, and for box semantics, it's also quite interesting. Um, not only the language keeps being regular, but the same complexity bounds apply. Even if you now let the variables to, um, to be mapped by any word in your alphabet, okay? Uh, in any language. So this might be surprising at first, but the trick is um, that if you allow some variable to map to an infinite, a language with infinitely many words, then you're not going to be using it for certainty. So this is sort of the intuition. Um, so yeah, I, I will just finish with, with some things that we want to do next, uh, which we think they are, they are interesting on their own, but maybe they, they can hint possible applications for these uh, objects. So, um, so yeah, so we, 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 we basically proved that the minimal NFA that accept this, this, um, this intersection, uh, again, now if you have two, sorry, if you have two parameterized regular expressions, you want to take the certainty language of each of them, you want to intersect them. We have proved that if you want an NFA for that, then it is necessarily of double exponential size. Uh, but so now the question is, well, what if you want to keep being, staying on the language of parameterized regular expressions? So this is the, the thing that, um, that is not letting us sleep. So per perhaps it's possible to create an expression whose certainty language represents the intersection of two, uh, of two certainty language of some parameterized regular expression. So if this is true, and, and we haven't even, I mean, we, 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 we cannot prove that it's not true, but we, we also, we, we cannot construct it yet. But if this is true, then it would mean that you could basically uh, operate, start intersecting regular NFAs or expressions, operating them, staying in the language of, of, um, of certainty, and not moving out, uh, and, and basically doing everything in polynomial time until at the end, you get your final blow up, double exponential that you will not be, uh, be avoid. But perhaps along the way, there are easy um, heuristic or things to find that, that your language is empty, and you will not even need to transform this back into a regular expression. So this might um, give you the possibility of, of really speeding up uh, operations or um, yeah, operations on NFA where, when, when you need intersection and stuff like that. So you can define this for, for all operations that you would think about. So union, concatenation, uh, complementation. So this is what we're planning to, to work next. So thanks. <laughs>